Well, this time next week, fireworks will be lighting up the sky with all of those 4th of July celebrations happening around East Tennessee. Yeah, on a Wednesday this year, if you're planning on putting on a show of your own, well, keep in mind there are some dangers. Reporter Aaron Barnett on your side tonight with what you need to know to keep your family safe on this Independence Day. That I know is a good one. I've been coming for years and I know that's a good one. Stephen Green getting ready for his yearly fireworks show. I used to usually make a big production out of it. Dixie Lee Fireworks open for their busiest holiday season of the year. Oh yeah, we've been very busy. With more than 300 items to choose from, Bill Sharp, one of the owners, says people really need to think about their surroundings, where they plan to set off fireworks before making a purchase. If you're wanting to shoot fireworks for like a large group of people in your backyard, you know, I'd suggest to get, you know, your repeating items right here uh, because they're going to, you know, they're going to go straight up like an elevator shaft and they're going to clear all the trees and all the roofs and they're going to make your display that, you know, what you've got, what you see like in people's backyards. If you have trees that are in your house, around your house, you want to shoot things like maybe this item right here, <clears throat> which is a ground item. It'll just spray up like a volcano. And don't forget to read the instructions. Every firework is different. Every item has a label on it. And if, if, you, if you just follow the instructions that are set forth on each, on each item, you shouldn't have a problem at all. We have a lot of grass fires and things like that. Jerry Phillips, Deputy Chief of Blount County Fire, asking everyone to take precautions. This will be the first 4th of July. It will be legal to set off fireworks in Blount County. He says anytime fire is involved, there is a risk. It's bad enough if you damage your, your property or your belongings, but when somebody else gets hurt or somebody else's belongings or... Uh, houses or anything gets damaged, that's when it really hurts. Hoping people will follow the rules to make a safe and enjoyable 4th of July here in East Tennessee. In Blount County, Aaron Barnett, WATE 6 on your side. As Aaron mentioned, there are some restrictions. It is now legal to shoot fireworks in Blount County, but not between the hours of 11 p.m. and 7 a.m. Setting off fireworks inside the city limits of Maryville, Alcoa and Townsend is still illegal. We want to stress that. It's also illegal to shoot them off in Knox County. On your side tonight here, we're coming up on the 1st of July, which actually means new laws will take effect here in Tennessee. And there's a bunch of them here. The list from the Secretary of State's office runs 19 pages. So tonight we're only going to run through just a few of them. All right, first up here is a change to protect people who fall victim to identity theft. As of July 1st here, consumer reporting agencies cannot charge Tennesseans for placing a temporary security freeze or are on their report here. Now that also goes for lifting that temporary freeze when you want to get rid of it. Speaking of identity theft, the new law will allow victims out there to get a new driver's license with a new number, but there is a stipulation you do have to show a police report in order to qualify to do that. And another change when it comes to your car, you've probably seen electronic proof of insurance offered by insurance companies. Well, a new law would apply that idea to vehicle registration. So if an officer asks to see your proof of registration, well, you can pull it up on your cell phone and show it that way. Now, one other change we're going to mention here, and this is something we have covered quite a bit here. It has to do with automatic external defibrillators or AEDs. Those are the life saving devices which can shock a heart back into rhythm. Now, we have followed the story of Rhonda Harrell, a mom whose son died of a heart problem while at school, and her campaign to put AEDs in more places. The new rule requires all public high schools to have an AED, and it encourages public middle and high schools to do the same. Now, again, this is just a handful of the new laws I just went over here. We have posted a full list, the whole 19 pages on our website, wate.com. You can also take a look at it on our free news app. You just have to go to the As Seen On section. Kristen? All right, Ryan, thank you. Well, the man accused of driving a car into a crowd of people in Charlottesville, Virginia last summer, now facing federal hate crime charges. James Alex Fields Jr. was arrested in August. Prosecutors say he drove into that crowd of people demonstrating against the Unite the Right rally, killing a woman and injuring others. What we're dealing with today is a hate crime. It's an action undertaken out of hate and because of bias motivation, uh, and that is illegal. And this Department of Justice is resolute and firm in its commitment to prosecuting hate crimes. Fields already faces state first degree murder charges and malicious wounding, and the case was set for trial this fall. East Tennessee farmers will be showing off their best produce tomorrow at the return of the Blueberry Festival. In addition to blueberries, we're told there will be locally grown produce, meats, fruits, and vegetables. Also experts on 
on uh, how to teach you to fry, uh, freeze, dry, and preserve those blueberries so you don't just have to eat them all at once. Now, all of this starts tomorrow afternoon at 3 o'clock and it runs until 6 at New Harvest Park in East Knoxville. Now, here's Knoxville's most accurate forecast from the WATE 6 on your side storm team. Time now to get our best uh, blueberry recipes out. You just yeah. mentioned, someone mentioned blueberry pancakes earlier. Yeah, nothing exactly. wrong with blueberry yeah, pancakes. Mm. No, muffins. I like yeah. blueberry muffins. Right. So blueberry, I made blueberry zucchini bread last year. Just trying to get rid of it. Wow. Really? Yeah, it turned out really good. Blueberry nice. and zucchini together? Yeah. I would have thought of that. It was awesome. Yeah. Okay. All right, you, you write some of these down while I do the forecast. I'm going to be that, baking that these next few weeks. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's been asking when are we going to get a break in the rain. I do think as we head into the weekend, we will start to see some breaks. Not completely dry, but less than what we've seen. Going to be a lot of waterfalls, as you would imagine, in the Smoky Mountains, as there probably have been the past few days. This is a great one, the Grotto Falls area up there. This is sending from Jay Gothard. So thank you so much for sending that into my Facebook page. That gets Ken's pick of the night. Still going to see some rain overnight. Can't even rule out some thunder, but severe weather not anticipated. Just may wake you up. Call it Mother Nature's alarm clock. Heat and humidity are rising and rain chances are falling briefly as we head into the weekend. Fog not a concern right now, but where we've seen all the heavier rainfall, places like back across the plateau, I wouldn't be surprised if we have some pretty thick fog in some spots if we see breaks in the clouds. So just keep that in mind first thing tomorrow morning. More than that, there will be some scattered showers around. Pretty quiet now, but as I showed you just a minute ago, we're starting to see more developing back towards the west of the plateau. There's some lightning with this as well, so there's still enough energy for showers and storms to develop to the west. Atmosphere is pretty worked over here, so that's why I don't think we'll see severe weather, but rain. Yeah, I think will be possible into tomorrow morning. This is three o'clock and this is seven o'clock when you're heading out the door, so there'll be some scattered showers around and it's muggy. We're talking low 70s to start, but we'll push this on through. We see drier weather towards lunchtime. It's still overcast, but less rain coverage. Here's where it could be a concern if we see some breaks in those clouds. That kind of helps to fuel the atmosphere again, but at this point, I don't think we would see widespread showers and storms in the afternoon. Very spotty, and it looks like this forecast model showing the Southern Valley may be more apt to see them, which certainly seems possible, but otherwise it's warm, it's humid with high temperatures in the upper 80s. Sweat cast, yeah, that's getting a workout for sure. Tropical to sticky all the way through the weekend and into next week, so not much relief from the humidity coming up, even though it may be a little less rainy. We'll say 87 for tomorrow. Knoxville 84 in Clinton rain chances, especially early in the day. Same thing on the plateau with low to mid 80s there. Southeast Kentucky, an early chance of showers. You may want to grab the umbrella when you head out the door. The afternoon's mostly cloudy, drier with mid 80s. Watch out for some wet trails. That's kind of the biggest impact that we would expect to see across the Smokies for tomorrow. Seven day forecast. There it is. Most areas dry on Friday, but it's warm, humid highs in the low 90s, mid 90s Saturday with again still limited storms, but the rain coverage will go back up next week, and that does include the 4th of July. We'll keep an eye on that. All right, Ken, thank you. Hey, you know, we talked a little bit about Peyton Manning mm -hmm. kind of remembering John Ward. He had more to say on top of that, huh? Yeah, of course, at the tribute tonight uh, and Manning was not available to be there, but he did have a video message. We're going to hear his story about John Ward coming up in tonight's Orange and White Nation report.
Orange and White Nation Report, brought to you by your Greater Knoxville Honda dealers. The national champion is clad in you know. big orange. Thanks to all of you for being with us. This is John Ward saying so long, everybody, on this, the Vol Radio Network. That's a wrap. The voice of the Vols honored tonight at Thompson Bowling Arena. From his former colleagues to former players to fans who listened to his announcing, everyone has a story about John Ward. Those stories came together tonight in a fitting tribute to the late broadcaster Peyton Manning, unable to attend tonight's farewell, but sent along one of his favorite stories to pay his respects. After I finished playing at Tennessee and I was in pro ball, I would often call back to the University of Tennessee athletic department to call Coach Fulmer or someone else uh, in the athletic department. And if one of the assistants put you on hold, the holding music was some of John Moore's famous radio calls from legendary games or from that season. And I used to always enjoy being put on hold. And I was almost disappointed when the person I was calling picked up the phone because I enjoyed hearing that legendary famous voice of John Ward making some of his incredible calls. Also former Tennessee head coach and athletic director Doug Dickey back on Rocky Top to pay his tribute to John Ward. John Ward uh, was a guy that I think uh, had it all going for him and he knew what to do with it. He knew how to handle himself in his profession and what he did. And a very, tonight we have a very humble tribute to the part that John Ward played in our lives. If you had a chance to watch that tribute, you saw that it was a, an excellent uh, display put on by Vol Network, a tip of the cap to the, uh, tip of the, cap that, that is to the entire crew there. They did an excellent job. We'll move on, but stay on Rocky Top. Jeremy Pruitt picking up a big recruit today and really stealing one from West Virginia, that is, uh, even before uh, the two kick off the season. Pruitt picking up a commitment from three-star quarterback Brian Maurer. This is a Florida prospect. He picked Tennessee over West Virginia and Ohio State. He's actually the first quarterback in this 2019 recruiting class and the Vols' 12th overall commit. Uh, the nation's 18th-ranked pro-style quarterback. He's been pretty good in high school, 2,800 yards and 22 touchdowns as a junior last season. The Arkansas Razorbacks trying to bring the College World Series back to the SEC. Oregon State saying not so fast tonight. Two outs in the ninth inning. Arkansas actually dropped the pop-up. They kept this inning alive. You know what happens after that. We're tied at three. Trevor Larnack delivers the first round pick of the Minnesota Twins, crushing a two-run shot to right. Oregon State evens the finals five to three. We got a decisive game coming up tomorrow. Glory, glory. The World Cup bringing the world together. That's Mexico fans hoisting up a South Korean fan. That's because Mexico lost to Sweden three nothing, but South Korea beat Germany to send Mexico into the next round of the World Cup. We're taking a break. We'll be back after this.
Can't rule out a few isolated shower storms into tomorrow morning, so grab the umbrella before you leave the house. All right. Good call, yeah. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Have a good night.
despite currently being ranked 183rd in the world. Wimbledon usually follows the latest rankings, but can make a change if, quote, necessary to produce a balanced draw. Hmm. Hmm. Well, it's been a big topic lately. It has you been. You know, and, and they need to make some adjustments, so there see you what go. happens. How yeah. plays out come tourney time. Good luck to her. There you go. Summer may have just started, but Coles is getting a head start on the holiday. Holi holidays? Really? Ho, ho, ho. There you go. The retail chain announced it is already accepting applications for the holiday season. At 300 of its stores, the chain's executive vice president of human resources says it's the earliest Coles has ever started hiring seasonal workers. It's striking an early claim in a tight job market that's made it hard for companies to find workers. Christmas wow. in July. Uh, well, there you go. There's the tie. I know, in, the right? Hallmark movies are starting. I <laughs> saw that <laughs> online. I know <laughs> what you're going to be doing this I weekend. Know. All right, or next weekend. Holiday. Hey, let's go to Ryan O'Donnell right now for a look at some of the big stories we're working on. Yeah, before we know it, we're going to see pumpkin spice this that's and that. Right. Christmas trees. Chris will be Depot. first in line. Right. Too. Yeah. Yeah. No so complaints. <laughs> <laughs> hey, folks, uh, two juveniles out there. They're admitting that it was their fault. Eight people are without a place to stay tonight. They started a fire while playing with a lighter. Well, coming up tonight at 5 o'clock here, the special class they're now taking to make sure this doesn't happen again. Then tonight at 530, the voice of the Vols being honored tonight with a special tribute. We're hearing from the man now calling the plays. The legacy John Ward is leaving behind. And tonight at 6 o'clock, severe weather knocking out power, turning off the stoplights on a busy street. How it happened, why this sort of weather is a challenge for power crews, and how you should handle the situation. That's coming up tonight at 6. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Ryan. Nothing worse coming to an intersection than seeing that flashing yep. light, right? All right, still to come here at 4, a rescue caught on camera. Yeah, Chick-fil-A, as you likely know, known for great service. But see how one employee went above and beyond to save a customer's life when we come back. I was up here doing my job, and uh, and our dining room lady, lady Anita, came up to me with urgency and said that there's a man choking in the dining room.
Chick-fil-A is known for incredible service, but watch as this 23-year-old employee saves a man's life. Now, you can see a customer start choking on his food. A woman then tries to perform the Heimlich maneuver. When she was unsuccessful, though, 23-year-old Hunter Harris stepped in to help out. Now, we're told, listen to this, that he did the same thing for a customer just a couple of months ago. Certified by Weather Rate, Knoxville's most accurate forecast. This is your forecast first from the WATE 6 in your side storm team. Brought to you by Knoxville Wholesale Furniture, the furniture you want. Hi everyone, I'm meteorologist Ken Weathers. We remain weather aware this evening. More scattered showers and thunderstorms across the area. In fact, quite dark right now in Cumberland County and Crossville from the Knoxville Wholesale Furniture Camera Network. Mainly some showers and storms early for our Thursday, but then we're starting to see less and less rain opportunities towards the weekend. But notice temperatures, they go up and up. We're talking low to mid 90s as we head into the weekend. We do have some thunderstorms we need to track now. We're going to do that as the news continues. WATE 6 in your side. News at 5 starts now. Right now here at 5 o'clock, heavy winds and rains downing trees and causing damage all across East Tennessee. We are tracking the latest storms for you and when they'll be making their way into your neighborhood. And we're following breaking news. Supreme Court Justice Anthony Kennedy announcing his retirement today. How this could change the makeup of our nation's highest court. And East Tennessee legend John Ward being honored tonight. How Vol Nation is remembering the voice of the Vols right now here at five. Good evening, everybody. I'm Ryan O'Donnell and I'm Kristen Farley. Thanks so much for joining us. Our top story right now. Again, the weather. In fact, for the third day in a row, we are seeing <laughs> strong storms making their way across East Tennessee. Yeah, in fact, viewer Kathy Spencer sending us these pictures here. Heavy winds. They're knocking a tree on her house. She's not alone, though. Down trees, other storm damage being called in all across the region here. Meteorologist Ken Weathers now joining us from the Storm Center. So Ken, of course, people wondering when are they going to expect uh, either the storms to pass on through and we'd be done with this? At least a little bit of less rain, huh? Uh, yeah, the good news is the opportunity for the stronger storms like we have now, those will weaken as this kind of works its way into an atmosphere that's really been worked over. It's kind of like the prize fighter analogy. They've been boxing all day. Now you've got a new contender coming up. This current boxer doesn't have much energy left. That's the same thing with the atmosphere. We've had a lot of rain today, some thunderstorms. So even though we're seeing severe storms now into Morgan County and extreme southern Scott County for another 15 minutes as this works its way eastward, the opportunities for severe weather will diminish. Yes, still some scattered showers and storms, but the severe threat looks a little bit lower. Tracking this one, it's near Wartburg at 504, just a couple of minutes from right now. Oakdale 517 and Coalfield at 524. Winds aren't nearly as strong as they were earlier, but still could be seeing some gusts near 40 miles per hour between Sunbright and Wartburg, maybe close to 50 just west of the Wartburg area, but we'll watch that. Six timeline shows the scattered shower and thunderstorm opportunities will continue a little longer. Here's 7 o'clock this evening. There's 9 o'clock, so again, the coverage will be decreasing, as especially as we get past sunset. But this doesn't mean we're done with our rain chances just yet. More on that coming up in just a few minutes. For the update there with storms in the forecast, now is the perfect time to download our free weather app if you haven't already. That's right. You can get your local forecast. You can get updates, all of that right to your phone for free. You can even personalize it to your exact location, even put several locations in. Just search Knoxville Weather in the Apple Store or Google Play Store. We're continuing to follow breaking news tonight. Supreme Court Justice Anthony Kennedy announcing he's retiring from the nation's highest court. Kennedy has been the key swing vote on a number of big decisions from same sex rights to abortion. And now President Trump is in a race against the clock to get a nominee confirmed before the midterm elections. ABC's Janae Norman now hearing reaction from Capitol Hill. It's the end of a generation. After 30 years serving on the highest court in the land, Justice Anthony Kennedy announcing he's retiring. He is a man that uh, I've known for a long time and a man that I've respected for a long time. Hopefully we're going to pick somebody who will be as outstanding. The 81-year-old Kennedy, a conservative, serving as a key swing vote on a number of monumental decisions, including same-sex rights, same-sex marriage, and abortion. The retirement, not unexpected, but sure to shake up the Supreme Court. The remaining justices split between those who lean liberal and those who go conservative. Filling his seat is shaping up to be a fight. Republicans now have just a one-seat majority in the Senate and the ability to confirm a justice with a simple majority. We'll vote to confirm Justice Kennedy's successor this fall. It's imperative that the president's nominee be considered fairly 
and not subjected to personal attacks. But they face a battle from Democrats who have the potential to take back control of the Senate in November. And after Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell blocked President Obama's last Supreme Court nominee. Plus, there's the potential pushback from retiring Republican senators like Bob Corker and Jeff Flake. Well, I think myself and a number of uh, senators, uh, at least a few of us, will stand up and say, let's not move any more judges until we get a vote, for example, on tariffs. Now, the White House came out with a list of 25 potential Supreme Court picks last year. Now, President Trump saying he'll be using the same list as he works to pick a nominee to replace Justice Kennedy. Now, coming up tonight at 530, we're sitting down with our WATE 6 on your side uh, legal analyst, Greg Isaacs. We're finding out how Kennedy's retirement here is changing the makeup of the Supreme Court and how this could change court proceedings in the near future. Hey, another big story right now, the voice of the Vols being honored by the University of Tennessee tonight, one week after his death. Play-by-play -play broadcaster John Ward passing away last Wednesday at the age of 88. WATE 6 on your side, sports reporter Mark Whiteman joining us now live down at Thompson Bowling Arena for the tribute set to kick off here in less than an hour from now, 6 o'clock here. Mark, how are things looking? Hey, Ryan and Kristen, good evening. For more than 30 years, John Ward was the voice of Tennessee football. And as you just mentioned, Tennessee's tribute and ceremony to his life and his voice get ready to start here in just under an hour. Want to show you a little bit around what the inside of Thompson Bowling Arena looks like right now on the stage. There are some of his mementos, a headset, uh, his famous blue neck towel, a typewriter as well. Over there, there's a jersey with his catchphrase, give him six. And if you look up into the banners, you can see a collection of his catchphrases digitalized up through the digital banners and here some of his more well-known catchphrases. Now I mentioned his first year, 1968. That's when Bobby Scott threw his first pass in Neyland Stadium. Tennessee's quarterback in 1969 and 1970, kind enough to give me a few minutes today sharing with me the origin of one of Ward's first catchphrases. During his early career, uh, we had a wide receiver named uh, Stan Trott. And uh, I hit him with a uh, pass, uh, you know, a deep pass down the sideline. And one of John's signature calls at that time was Scott to trot. And uh, every time I'd throw the ball to Stan from then on, uh, John would say, you know, Scott to trot. You know, it was a time where, you know, he, heck, I guess he was kind of just learning a little bit and everything too. Uh, but he was a, uh, a consummate pro. Now, I also had a chance to speak with VFL defensive tackle Chris Wampler. Wampler was in meetings all afternoon, but he did send me a quote that I would like to share with you. It began by saying, the John Ward era announcing Tennessee football and basketball is what most longtime fans embrace at Tennessee. John Ward was able to tell the story, and you didn't feel like it was a sporting event. He went on to say, during their time, John and Bill Anderson were the best. Tennessee fans have now lost two of the greatest ambassadors of all time. Anderson, of course, passed away last April. So moving sentiments there from both Chris Wampler and Bobby Scott. And we, that's what we expect to hear all evening. Stories, memories, some of his greatest calls. Got a chance to look at the list of, of guest speakers tonight. It promises to be a very powerful evening. But coming up at 5.30, Kristen and Ryan, I caught up with the current voice of the Vols, Bob Kessling. We'll have that for you coming up at WAT 6 on your side, news at 5.30. But for now, I'll send it back to you in the studio. Yeah, good memories. You yeah. know, I bet a lot of people are going to hear some of the, the calls here that they haven't heard just because mm -hmm. times have changed, players have changed, and he's come up with different It's going to be a bittersweet evening out yeah. there. I think that word Mark used powerful is exactly right. Yeah, I believe it. Again, that tribute kicks off tonight at 6 o'clock. We're going to be streaming that full ceremony for you on our website at WATE.com. Well, we're learning more about a program here tonight used by Knoxville firefighters when a child has an unhealthy interest in fires. Yeah, you may recall that devastating fire on Monday at Southwood Apartments right off of Severe Avenue in South Knoxville. Well, firefighters saying two preteens living in one of those apartments caused the fire. The children telling investigators they had been playing with a cigarette lighter and then they accidentally caught the couch on fire. The Knoxville Fire Department saying both will now be enrolled in what is called a Juvenile Fire Setter Intervention Program. New here at 5 o'clock, we had WATE 6 on your side reporter Laura Holm speak with the instructor to learn more about what this course involves and why it's important to act now. 
For many years now, the Knoxville Fire Department has used the Juvenile Fire Center Intervention Program as a way to help kids with a higher interest in fire. Kids who may have set one or simply pulled a fire alarm. And we educate them about fire, what it does, what it can do, how it can get them in trouble, how it can get them hurt, burned, killed. Um, how it can cost them a lot of money if they get in, in trouble from burning things down. Firefighters say the reason they do this program is to stop more fires from happening. We know that about 47% of kids that have started a fire will start another fire. About 47%, so that's almost half. And the problem there is, is that most of the time when they start a second fire, it's bigger than the first and does more damage than the first. The course is one on one. It lasts about two hours and it's done for two days. We have to assess how they're doing. Where are they in life right now? Are they, do they have things that are bothering them? Are they abused? And what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out what level of fire play that they are at because there are five levels of fire play. Captain Paul Trumpor tells me the first level is curiosity, then experimentation. That's followed by the attention, vengeful fire setting level, and then finally, Captain Trumpor says the final two levels, disturbed and very disturbed, get into mental health issues. Most of the children that we deal with are in those first levels, okay? And we can usually pretty quickly solve that. If it's a medium level concern, we go ahead and put them through the program, but we also involve mental health. Uh, so I team up with mental health providers. If it's a higher concern, uh, the ones that they're, they're going to need some more assistance. They're going to need some more guidance and some professional help uh, above my level. So what we'll do is we'll stop the intervention and we'll involve mental health clinicians. Captain Trumpor says this intervention works. In Knoxville, only 2% of children repeat this kind of behavior. The biggest thing is we're trying to keep those kids safe and the families too. In Knoxville, Laura Holm, WATE, 6 on your side. Again, the two juveniles who admit to starting the Southwood apartment fire will be enrolled in the fire setter intervention program. We're told no people were injured during that fire, although eight were temporarily displaced from their homes. Well, former KPD chief Chief Roush hosting his very first press conference today as the director of the TBI. Coming up tonight at 530, what he's saying about the latest controversies in the state agency and his plans on moving forward. And still to come here at 5. This is Don Dare in Jefferson County, where Pat Wilhoyt believes she was corresponding with a U.S. Army officer on Facebook. He needed money to come back home. She believed him. She sent the money. We'll tell you how much in my Six on Your Side report coming up. A few showers and storms will linger this evening, but there are some changes for the second half of the work week, and I'll tell you what those are coming up. You're watching WATE 6 on Your Side, News at 5.
Now, here's Knoxville's most accurate forecast from the WATE 6 on your side storm team. Welcome back. All current warnings have expired across the area, but we're staying weather aware as we'll still see additional showers and some thunderstorms around. Heavy rain is going to be the biggest impact with this, but still a few of the isolated storms could have some gusty winds. Biggest thing is going to impact that commute that you have this evening and maybe some outdoor plans at least through sunset. A few more storms are possible overnight as well. Heavy rainfall right now in Cumberland County in Crossville atop City Hall there. It's Kind of hard to see much in the distance there with all the heavy rain falling. This is from our Knoxville Wholesale Furniture Camera Network. So plenty of rain here and we're seeing that on Storm Tracker 6. There's Interstate 40, Crossville right underneath that heavy rain. Again, the warning we had for Morgan County expired just a few minutes ago. This is sliding towards the southeast. So Crab Orchard 419, Coalfield 524. Harriman, if it stays on this path there in Roan County, you'll get it right before 530 in Roan State Community College at 535. We'll pull back out again. This is where the stronger storms are at this point, right along and south of Interstate 40, and they're tracking off towards the south and east. As I mentioned, as this continues to work south, this area hasn't seen a lot of rain today, so we still could see some stronger storms to the south, but really anything along and north of I-40 since we've had a lot of rain today, not expecting much in the way of severe weather, just could be some moderate to heavier rainfall. Seeing that by 6 o'clock this evening, but notice how the coverage will decrease through the evening. There's 7 o'clock. By the time we're at 9 o'clock, not a lot left except right along the southern half of our viewing area or southern quarter of our viewing area between 40 and 75 from Crossville all the way down to Chattanooga. And then by midnight tonight, things will be quiet. So the better opportunity for the scattered showers and storms will be between, between now and about 9 o'clock this evening. Otherwise, pretty quiet past midnight, but there will be another opportunity of some scattered showers and storms late tonight into tomorrow morning. Not as widespread and not expected to be severe, but six timeline kind of points this out from midnight tonight on in through tomorrow morning. There's three o'clock. We've got some of the scattered showers around the region there. As you see that on into seven as well. So go ahead and grab that umbrella as you head out the door tomorrow morning. You're probably going to need it in some spots, but then watch as we head through the afternoon tomorrow. A little drier, still some cloud cover around, but it's going to be warm and humid with highs in the upper 80s and where we see some breaks, we could see a few more pop up showers and storms tomorrow afternoon. But again, nothing like what we've seen the past few days. The better chances this evening and then some spotty showers and storms overnight tonight with quieter weather really by the time we get into tomorrow evening at 11 o'clock. So as the storm chances go down, guess what? Heat and humidity is going to go back up, but it's going to be quite steamy over the next couple of days. About the only break we may get is Saturday, and that's not much of a break, just showing sticky conditions while the rest of the time we're very tropical across the region there. So 70 forecast looks like this scattered showers and storms, especially early Thursday. Most are dry Friday and really Saturday as well, but that 94 is going to probably feel more like upper 90s when you factor in the humidity. Then early next week, we're back in the thunderstorm pattern that we've seen the past couple of days. Low 90s for highs and some scattered afternoon storm chances. All right, Ken, thank you very much. Well, listen up, everyone. A huge Internet scam is breaking the hearts of thousands of people. Yeah, a criminal network to defraud lonely people all around the country with false promises of love and romance. Well, it's also mm. hitting Tennessee. A Jefferson County woman called WATE 6 on your side. Consumer reporter Don Dare to tell her mm. story. Don, she says so no one else falls victim. Yeah, we've met now two women. One woman last month, she lost $35,000. And here's how the scenario works. These scammers sit at computers safely overseas, hunting for their prey on social networks, and they rarely get caught. The victims are often left financially damaged and so embarrassed that many are reluctant to come forward. However, two ladies have talked with us and want others to know about this scam that has cost them tens of thousands of dollars. This is where it all started at. Pat Wilhoyt had been corresponding with a man on Facebook since January after he sent her a friend request. He also sent this picture, but Pat didn't realize it had been stolen or cloned by the scammer. Who is he? Um, Paul Stewart. Pat was told Stewart was a U.S. Army officer on a peacekeeping mission with the United Nations and presently based in Syria. She said they corresponded for months at first talking about their lives, getting to know one another. The scammer's intention was to establish a relationship of trust. Then a love note arrived and the desire to be with her, he wrote. He wanted to make love to me, hold me in his arms, kiss me, huh? buy a new house, a bigger house. Love is as sweet as your voice. Love is magical. It's my life. Pat received several messages, poems like this one. 
Then the scammer's real intention was made. What does he tell you that he needs? Money for a um, vacation certificate he, so he can come home from the UN. And then the UN, I got a message from uh, supposedly the UN. In that message from the scammer, Pat needed to wire $5,600 so her boyfriend could fly to Tennessee. Who were you sending it to? To Paul to send over to the UN so that he could get his certificate, vacation certificate, to come home. Why did you believe this? Idiot. <laughs> That's just plain and simple. An idiot. This is the Western Union receipts. And she sent the money, several thousand dollars, before her bank warned her to end the payments. They flagged it as a uh, scam. And the bank gave us that card with Western Union's name and phone number and everything on it to uh, call them. In a similar scam, Rhonda Mish told us last month a man had friended her on Facebook. He said his name was Derek Wayne, that he was an oil rig worker and had won a big court judgment. The picture here was cloned. They awarded him $980,000. He won the $980,000. Yes. Wayne asked Rhonda if he could put the money in her bank account. Remember, he was on an oil rig way out in the ocean. He also wanted to share some of his money with Rhonda, but first he would need her assistance. He asked Rhonda to pay some important fees. Through bank-to-bank -bank transfers, he needed $27,000 for one fee, even more money for an anti-laundering certificate. I borrowed the money. How much? $27,500 and $8,700 and $1,500. At the Better Business Bureau, Tony Binkley says the scam that Rhonda fell victim to is widespread, and the romance scam that Pat believed both have cost victims worldwide a billion dollars in the past two years. He said the scammers groom their victims on Facebook, and the cons take their time doing it. Once they understand that they've got you hooked, they got you. Unfortunately, that's, that's the case. You know, you give them a little bit and they're going to keep asking for more until it finally stops, if it ever stops. For Pat, it's been an expensive lesson. Eventually, it comes down wanting money. And you're going to lose it. Yep. Big time. Now, the FBI reports romance scams account for the highest financial losses of all Internet-related crimes. The Bureau's Internet Crime Complaint Center said it received 15,000 romance scam complaints last year, a 20% increase over the previous year. And the favored marks for scammers, according to the FBI, listen to this, 82% of romance scam victims are women over the age of 50. They're the ones defrauded out of the most money. And, you know, the victims are so embarrassed, they, they don't even tell their friends or family that they've done this. So uh, those numbers, the 82% who uh, report it, it's probably a lot more folks than probably that. Probably higher yeah, than yeah. that. Glad these women are coming yeah. forward. Yeah, kudos to these women for yeah, coming it, it, forward. It really was brave on their part. It didn't take any convincing. They said, come and talk to me. Uh, as you heard, Pat said mm -hmm. she wasn't too smart about what she did in mm -hmm. sending the money. All right, Don, yeah. thank yeah. you so much. Thank you, Don. If you have a consumer question for Don, send him an email at ddare at whe.com or call us 6 on your side hotline number, 865-633-5974. Remote Area Medical taking its disaster team to Texas. How you can help them help the victims of flooding there when we come back. Stay with us. You're watching WHE 6 on your side, News at 5.